So the screen, um, it, this particular one is a little, it's a little bit rough. One of the things about the screens is they come out different every time um, you do them, you know, whoever, you know, they're going to plant a bunch of stuff. Some of it will come up and some of it won't come up. It depends on what kind of weather they have. I have to assume they have irrigation there, so they're going to do their best job of getting things um, activated. Um, so what you have here is just a it's kind of orient yourself. It's um, what sorghum. Yeah. Well, it's sorghum. Um, alfalfa, right? Yep. Sunflower. Yep. Canola. Yep. Um. Cotton, okay, it's, which is uh, kind of variable. Soybeans, corn, not much really, right? Velvet leaf. Um, what is that? Morning glory. Morning glory, and then are these two different types of beans. Uh, they weren't supposed to be. They okay, had, uh, they're both. Is there bean? Just they're both. Okay, and then in the plot you have, and you can have this there too, you can have other weeds. And so what you should have, you don't have as much of it here because we had a um, big rain so everything kind of washed, but um, the plots will be wide enough and then you should have right an untreated area, untreated area between the plots. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll always be able to compare, you know, the first thing you're going to want to do is come out and say, okay, I know, you know, what the rows are. So as you're walking through, you've sort of got an idea of what, you know, what's planted out there. Um, and then you're always going to be comparing to, um, you know, the check uh, plot that's next to you. One of the things about the check plot, before I forget to tell you that, is when you're looking for symptomology, sometimes there's no symptomology or there's not much symptomology. That's why it's important on the screen. You, you really have to know the spectrum of control, like what differentiates dual from harness, from whatever, right? There may be one plant, like one species, it's basically your key. Um, identifier because sometimes you walk in and there's and you know the pre's for example you won't see any symptoms and sometimes the post you know they, there's they work so fast or whatever and you know some of them just don't show symptomology but one of the important things there is on the edges like right when you're trying to figure out okay I think it's this um, but it kind of fried everything or everything's dead you know you can go to the edge of what was sprayed and sometimes see symptomology on plants that only got like a half dose right so keep that in mind as as you're walking through so for me, I mean, the first thing that I'm going to do when I come in is look at it and say, okay, I know it's pre-emergence versus post-emergence, right? You should see some symptomology. I mean, if you see in post, you're going to see skeletons, or you should see something that gives you an indication um, it's post-emergence. A lot of the pre-plots, and these are a good example, uh, there's a little bit of symptoms with a couple of herbicides, but largely at that point, what you're looking at is what did it control and what did it not control? In some cases, sort of partially, or in some cases, maybe stunning. Right, so that's what I'm going to do first, and then what I'm going to, use, you know, most of these are corn and soybean herbicides, or both, you know, both or one or the other. Um, still, with other herbicides, uh, a few other specialty herbicides kind of mixed in. So, what I'm going to usually do is go, okay, is it a, you know, is it is it is there a corn or a soybean herbicide? Can I really flat out tell this is for safe for corn and not for beans or vice versa? Right, so that's where I'm going to go, and then what I'm going to do is take a look and see. Um, is it primarily a grass herbicide or primarily a broadleaf herbicide? Now most of these cross over, right? So you're, you're going to have grass and broadleaf activity. Given that, you know, you're going to come into some plots and not see any grass, right? You know, from the pre at all. And you're going to see maybe like, you know, the sorghum stunted and the wheat stunted and things like that. And you're going to look at it and say, okay, this has a lot of grass activity, right? It may also have some broadleaf activity, but that's, that's um, sort of where I'm going to go with it. And then I'm going to look for symptoms while I'm doing that and see if I can pick out something that tells me, okay, I know this is growth regulator, I see some twisting, right? Um, or I see white bleaching from HPPD or something like that. And then I'm going to start looking at spectrum of control. Um, and that's where your that sort of other part of knowledge comes in where you're looking at it thinking, okay, I, I'm pretty sure this is like a dual type product metallochlor, but there's, you know, four products here really that could look like that. There's three cetamides, there's Zidua, Dual, and Harness, right? And then there's also Pendimethalin, which can look, I mean, if you don't have symptomology, its spectrum of control can really look quite a lot like that. So that's where you're sort of going to have to 
you know, depending on how much time you want to spend, you know, with the spreadsheets that you have, look at it and say, okay, I know if I'm down to dual, you know, that um, versus Zidjua, and I'm pretty sure it's one of those, or harness, that I'm looking for this. I'm looking for velvet leaf to survive, or I'm looking for cotton to survive, right, or something like that. So that's kind of how I, how I approach it. I can walk through here and kind of characterize these a little bit for you. The pre's here are, um, this is not a, um, uh, the pre, is, there's a lot of pre uh, plots that really look about the same. I mean, the Atrazy looks like the dual and stuff here. So we'll kind of walk through without agonizing about it too much. Um, then we'll get, to, we'll get to the post emergence because one of the things about this is we are missing a few of the key species that'll let you um, let you differentiate some of that, right? And when we, we planted this, we sprayed the freeze the same day. Normally you need a little bit of rain to get the freeze incorporated and activated. Right after we planted, we got two and a half inch rain and all this was underwater the rest of the day. So instead of having clean uh, separation by plot, yeah, it's it's all, yeah. Uh, you get a lot of stuff running around back and forth. So yeah. the freeze are not fantastic this year. That's where you can go back and look at your spreadsheet. And that's what they should look like for spectrum of control versus what is actually here. But we can still look at some yeah. and carcasses. And, it, and it's always variable, and, I, and I, I can't, I haven't memorized all the differences in terms of dual does control sunflower or whatever. I don't have all those minor ones. So if you have, if you remember some of that as we're walking through from your experience, you can certainly remind me, right? So. Mark, do, do they use conventional corn and soybean crops, or do they use trade? They should tell you, right? Yeah, so typically, uh, besides having uh, untreated checks between the plots, they usually have an untreated check plot, and on the end of it, They'll have stakes labeling all the different crops. Yeah, you don't have to guess it. It'll say Roundup Ready yeah, corn right, or it'll right. Right. Yeah. Ready, whatever. That's. That way if you go to the corn and you know it's something that's stacked or single mm -hmm. and it's surviving. It's usually that's up to their discretion at, at the location. It's a good it's a good tool and they probably I'm going to guess will give you maybe a couple corns and a couple soybeans. So don't. Um, that that can be again another thing where you're looking at it thinking I think it's this and then you see the soybeans right, survived whatever and you're like ah. Oh, you know, okay, I know that's what it is. So, yeah. yeah the, whoever the contest organizer is, if you look at the option to plant, we, like that entire list of all the options, they can plant all those or they can plant like six species. It's really up to them for whatever they have seed stock for and whatever worked out. And also, and all the, the weeds sometimes just don't come up. Right. They, they don't. So, I mean, you know, it's right. Yeah, and if you have other questions or whatever, just feel free to. Um, ask as we go through here. What One of the things we didn't do here that's helpful is we didn't group the sites of action together. It's just some years we don't, some of the years we do. So you actually, this first plot's harness, and then we also have dual, and then we have, uh, do they have to know common name or just trade name or what? It varies per undergrad. Or okay, so Cetachlor, Warrant, or dual, um, uh, harness, Sidua, which is paroxysulfone, and then Dual, which is metallic core, so they're down a little bit. It's more helpful when they're together, but I'm not sure you can tell a lot. Yeah, right. So this is um, in, in those three, they're all uh, group 15 meristem inhibitors, two meristem inhibitors, and so you're, you're probably not going to see symptomology really. You can occasionally, depending on rates, see a little bit of wrinkling of leaves, like a drawstring effect on the leaves. So some of the species that maybe come up that but are still sensitive, you may see some of that drawstring. I think what you're likely to see is what you see here. You see some stunning of the stuff that's, you know, was kind of kind of hammered by it, I guess, although that's stunned it all the way kind of through that, through that. So you should see some stunning of the velvet leaf here. Um, so you'll probably see some things there and doing pretty well, um, or possibly not with a, with a little bit of in between. So all three of them are grass herbicides um, that also control pigweed and nightshade, right? Um, they're all pretty similar in that regard. Um, and then and then it starts to differentiate. Um, harness um, and Zidua are going to be better on lamb squatters. Zidua is actually good on lamb squatters a lot of the time, and then Harness is kind of eh. And then Velvet Leaf is another one you'll start to see. Like Dual should really largely leave the Velvet Leaf almost completely, um, and then the Harness can have some activity, and then the Zidua probably a little bit more activity. And I can't remember the other key species you see. Um, uh, I don't I would expect the Zidua to kind of be broadest spectrum on the minor stuff, but I don't really remember that, so. Uh, you can see obviously the canolas here. Um, all three of them actually are kind of so-so on alfalfa, so you can see they're hindering the alfalfa there a little bit. And then none of them should really control composites like the sunflower, but the sunflower stand through here is I think really variable. 
So um, they, they may be having some activity, but they were largely really probably shouldn't. So uh, safe on both corn and soybeans, uh, all three of them, right? So you really shouldn't see any symptomology. Uh, the the um, sorghum, um, they should stunt the sorghum depending on what type of sorghum it is. So the, the sorghum can have a treatment called concept that's treated that protects it from injury from those, right? So I don't know if it protects from all three or just the dual, I guess maybe all. Yeah, I think it's specific to dual. So if you're looking at the sorghum and you're trying to compare a couple of those and you see the sorghum's looking good in the dual plot, but not really good in the harness and the Zidua plot, you know, that, that would be an indicator for you as well. If they don't use treated seed, then it really probably doesn't matter very much. Um, some of these are, I, I think are not terribly representative. So this is atrazine. And I've, you know, I've watched this screen for a long time and I participated, I coached the contest and sometimes atrazine is like a growth, uh, like a soil sterile. I mean, sometimes in this contest it is, it just like annihilates things and then other times it just really doesn't. And this is an example of where it really doesn't. It, it can have a lot of grass activity, but then not necessarily. It misses fall panicum completely, right? Whereas it gets foxtail, but it really, Velvet leaf is one of its weaknesses. Morning glory, it's actually pretty good on, but I mean, look at the beans here. Um, you know, and the beans can actually survive atrazine, and, and what you may see is you actually see a little bit of symptomology all through here. See those leaves down there? Where the, the, the uh, necrosis around the edge. So what happens with triazines, atrazine, is the beans come up, get started, they develop leaves, and then those leaves suck up the atrazine, and the leaves turn brown on the, on the uh, around the outside in yellow. So that's what you're looking for. If you do, if you see that the beans are there and still surviving, you may see it on the edge of the plot. That's one of your key uh, symptoms. And you can see it on some other species as well. Uh, but it's not a terribly representative plot. For me, um, safe on sorghum, safe on corn. Should take out the wheat. Um, I, I don't know why the canola is still here. That kind of surprises me, but I don't, you guys remember that, I don't know. No. no, it should stunt the wheat. It should cause, it could, it's, wheat will survive it. It should, the wheat should be there and that may be one you can see some symptoms on, but it be, should be stunted. Yeah. Kind of depends on how much activity you get from it. Is that like related to all small grains? Or? Oh yeah, they should all sort of do that. Is that right? You guys remember? Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty large seeded grass so it can come up and survive like a lot of the other grasses, but it should be stunted. That might be another one you see symptoms on. White, it can be kind of a whitish actually, kind of whitish, yellowish. Yep. Sorghum, yeah, should, sorghum should survive it fine. Yep. And then Carmex um, is also basically a photosynthesis inhibitor. Um, it did have a label on alfalfa, so Carmex is pretty broad spectrum. And again, I don't think this is terribly representative of it, but I can't remember the complete spectrum. They've messed around with Carmex on low rates on corn and things like that. So, you know, the corn can survive it. Um, it largely, I, don't, I can't really tell with the beans here. It, it used to have a label for alfalfa, if I remember right. So again, the alfalfa is surviving. And, and the rest of this, I'm not sure is terribly representative of Carmex. Do you? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. So I, I don't think there's a lot really to take home on this. You're looking for some of the same type of symptomology you could have with atrazine. All right, you got uh, two, two pre-emergence PPO inhibitors, Valor or Flumioxazin and Sulfentrazone or Spartan. Um, they're both labeled for beans, Valor's labeled for corn. Spartan's not labeled for corn, but it actually is relatively safe on corn. Um, between those two, I mean, you're, I'm trying to think of symptomology. You may you may actually not see any symptomology from them by the time you're looking at the plot. Uh, they both have some grass activity. Um, Valor um, has activity on ragweeds. Let me let me back up. They both have activity on lamb's quarter, nightshade, velvet leaf, um, some on morning glory, um, some on grass. Uh, rag, ragweed is a differentiator here. If they have ragweed planted, uh, sulfentrazone or Spartan has no activity on ragweed at all. It's like fertilizer. Right, so that's one of your key differentiators there. Um, I'm trying to think of nuts edge. They probably won't have nuts. It's just too hard to plant. Yeah, so um, 
as you can see basically Valor doing doing a pretty good job right here on the on the morning glory um, they can injure beans a little bit but you probably won't see it um, and Valor does have a label it's a kind of a weird label Valor has a, a label on alfalfa right where you can do it between cuttings so alfalfa has some uh, tolerance of Valor as well I'm trying to think am I missing anything there I don't think we've seen a lot of symptomology from those typically, right? I don't think we have, yeah. Um, Pursuit, this is actually interesting. Pursuit is an ALS inhibitor, and it's the only ALS inhibitor you have among the pre-emergence. So pre-emergence ALS inhibitors, you're gonna see things that survive. You're gonna see yellowing. You can see a little bit of growth distortion. Morning Glory is a really good indicator, actually. Once you figured out it's a pre-emergence plot, um, the morning glory should probably survive and see that yellowing and that wrinkling on that. That's like that's like a that's a pursuit in this in this the pure symptom right there. So it's got it's pretty broad spectrum. It's got grass activity. It's good on velvet leaf. Good on nightshade. Uh, kind of so-so on on uh, ragweeds. It has a has a post-emergence pursuit label. So pursuit surviving it here, but you can see the corn doesn't you know it. It should injure corn, or it should injure the sorghum, and it should injure the the corn. But the corn's real variable with pursuit. It actually, has a fair amount of tolerance, so sometimes you see that, and sometimes you don't. But see the sort of like the sorghum. See the purpling. Again, that's your other. Once you figured out it's a pre-emergence, you're seeing stunning, and you're seeing that yellowing, and then and then when you start to see some of that purpling in probably that, and possibly the wheat, you may or may not see it in the corn. Uh, you're seeing. This in the corn, which is, I, I'm not sure that's what that is or not, but um, so I think symptomology wise, you should see some symptomology in the Mazetha Pure plot that, that helps you out. If for some reason they've dug a corn plant um, and it's in water for you to look at, sometimes they do that and you see that's an indicator it's something, it's a root inhibitor, right? They want you to look at the roots and it's a bottle brush. It's like a series of short roots coming off the main roots. That would be an indicator of them is that the pure as well. So should should annihilate the canola. Um, there is canola that's ALS resistant though. So a, uh, depending on the trade. Okay, you have two bleachers in here. Uh, group 27 herbicides Balance Pro and Callisto, uh, and the. You can see some really good symptomology from these on the edges, but again, it's, this is kind of a weird plot because both of them really should have taken out the soybeans. Um, but you're looking for white. Um, balance has more grass activity, so if you see the sorghum surviving better and just generally grass is surviving better, and you see it here, right? So this is the balance and that's the Callisto. See how the generally there's just a bunch of grasses in the Callisto plot and the balance has done a pretty good job on the grasses. Um, I'm trying to think of other differentiators here. Yeah, I'm not coming up with it. If if there's no bleaching from these, you know, the balance can be a little bit hard to probably tell from something like dual or zidua. It should have more broadleaf activity. Uh, it's not terribly good on pigweeds. Um, you can, you can see some bleaching here. All right, you, you really should see some bleaching somewhere. So you see it there. Um, it's really the only preherbicide here that should cause bleaching without any other symptomology. That's isoxaflutol there, and this is mesotrion here. So, aside from that, I, I mean the grasses are a really key indicator there. Both safe on corn. The Callisto safe on sorghum. I'm not sure. I can't remember if balance is or not. Um, they they really should take the beans out. But they didn't hear so. Okay. Uh, Metribuzin, which is another triazine photosynthesis inhibitor. Um, and metribuzin is a little bit like atrazine. It's, it's got can have some decent grass activity, and it can have some pretty broad spectrum activity. And then other times it just it just really doesn't have a lot of activity. It's it's largely safe on corn, safe on soybeans. It has a pre-label for wheat, 
right? Um, you can see here it's taken out the alfalfa. Um, it's having some activity on the on the cotton, and again on the cotton you can see. Let me pull a plant. You can see on something that's got some sensitivity, right? You can see some triazine symptoms on older leaves, the yellowing. Right, so you're looking for that again with this, which is different than the bleaching. Now, one of the differences um, that is it does turn necrotic, right? So after that tissue turns yellow, it actually does sort of turn brown, whereas it really doesn't um, with the with the uh, mesotrion and the uh, asoxaflutol. Uh, Metribuzin is good on pigweeds, lamb's quarters, smartweed, Mrs. La Morning Glory. It's got some activity on velvet leaf, kind of eh, on ragweeds. Um, I think the other differentiators there. I'm trying to think what you would confuse it with. You could confuse it with Valor or probably Sulfentrazone. Once you've established it's safe on beans and possibly safe on corn. Um, what you'll see from the uh, Sulfentrazone and the Flumioxazin is they should, they did a reasonable job on Morning Glory and the Metribuzin really doesn't and they would do a better job on Velvet Leaf most of the time probably. Uh, as well. Grass activity with all three, that's all over the board really. So, And then of the four you've got left here, so we kind of covered Sulfentra Zone, which is 12, but so you have, you know, we talked about the fact that Prowl can look like Dual, can look like Harness, can look like Zidua. So what you have here is Prowl, and then Zidua, and then uh, Dual, right? So they're all they're all safe on corn largely. Prow can actually ding up corn once in a while. Um, they're all safe on soybeans. They all control grasses, right? Um, after that, I'd have to look at your specific spreadsheet, probably just do some differences, but you know, the prow is gonna control lamb's quarter, pigweed, um, won't do much on velvet leaf. This is making me a liar, right? It actually has, can have some decent activity on velvet leaf. Um, Shouldn't have any activity on nuts edge. Uh, probably pretty safe on wheat. Then the methyl one does have a, uh, a label, like a dormant label on alfalfa, so you can see the alfalfa has some tolerance to it. Among the three, pendamethyl one has the broadest label in terms just of a bunch of different like crops. Like you can put pendamethyl one in your garden, usually, right, incorporate it and go plant a lot of stuff in your garden at home, right? So, whereas you can't really do that with the other ones. So if you're looking at the, plot thinking, ah, I think it's just, it's pretty safe on a lot of stuff. It's probably more likely to be pentamethyl if you can get it to that place, get to that place, right? And then, yeah. Pen yeah, yeah, prow, prow and preen, yeah, okay. yep. So it's got, you know, just residual activity. You doesn't, you can, you can put it over the top of grass because it doesn't have any post activity, right? And this is, there's Zidua and Dual, and I think the, this is a struggle here to tell these two apart. Which isn't surprising that uh, the Zidua should have a little bit more velvet leaf activity. If you have a lamb's quarter and they actually get the lamb's quarter to grow, you know, the lamb's quarter should typically come through the prow, 50, 60, 80 percent come through, or maybe 50 percent control, whereas the Zidua really probably should control the lamb's quarter. Um, I can't remember the other key species differences. Um, looking at this, the dual may be a little bit harder on alfalfa, but I don't remember that as an indicator. So, safe on corn and beans. Shouldn't probably see any symptomology. If you ever do see, um, like a buggy whip, like a pre, like a pre plot, and I don't think we ever get this in a screen, but if you ever do a pre and you see like the corn coming out of the ground and it's kind of hooked over and like fused like that, that would be that would be one of these as compared to the pendamethyl one, but okay. And then is that twelve? Yeah. So here's twelve which is Spartan or Sulfentrazone. We talked about this back there comparing these to Valor and Fumioxazin. And it looks to me like on these two plots, the Sulfentrazone probably has less grass activity than the Valor. I think that's kind of variable. And these plots would also show, of course, Valor was sort of down in the puddle, but um, these plots would show uh, Valor a little bit better on the Morning Glory than the Sulfentra Zone, which I'm not sure is true to form, really. Um, 
it, it's not labeled for corn, but it actually has some relatively decent uh, uh, safety on corn, so you may or may not see some stunning on the corn. I'm trying to think. I'm kind of blanking on other things right now to separate them. I think, you know, what the pre-plots sort of show you here is, um, you know, and the list is sort of geared like this for everything just about except the pursuit. I think, you know, if you look at the pursuit plot, you'll think, okay, yellow, some crinkling like this. I know this is pursuit. The rest of these, when you look at that list, you can tell, you know, there's two to four things you have to be able to tell the difference between, right? So you may see some symptomology, but you're going to have to know your spectrum of control, especially on, a, on both the minor crops um, and, you know, a couple key species. For example, you know, you go back to Callisto and um, I saw the flute told, you know, the Callisto controls crabgrass and, the, and, that, and that's the only grass it really controls, whereas I saw the flute has got sort of a range of activity. So questions about any of that? Those are, those are tough plots really to, to get, to get a lot out of for me. I, you know. Okay. So some things on the post here in general. I mean, you have some of the key problems on the post are you're going to see you're going to typically see more symptomology, right? It was sprayed a couple of weeks ago. It's been hot. When it's hot, sometimes things get fried and they're gone when you get there. Other times, depending on how they sprayed it and the weather, you might see some symptomology, but you're likely to see more. But some of your key problems and take telling things apart in the post are 2,4-D versus clarity, right? 2,4-D versus dicamba, both growth regulators, so you're looking for some key differences there. That's always tough. Um, Fusillade versus select max, which I think is kind of a stupid to have both those in there myself, but um, I'm, I can give you a kind of a couple of suggestions there. Possibly resources versus Flexstar, but the other one I think that, can, and then the ALS, so you have classic versus Sandia versus Osprey versus Accent that are all ALS inhibitors, so they can all give you similar symptomology. The one that I find the toughest is Liberty versus Gramoxone versus Glyphosate, because you can walk in there and just everything's annihilated with any of them, and so um, you're looking for a kind of a, a few key, I, it's it's not no necessarily spectrum of control, of course, if they have Roundup Ready corn or Liberty Link corn and then identify, right, and the Gramoxone fries it, that's obviously a key indicator for you, but Depending, you know, and hopefully they have something like that. But there's a couple key key symptom differences. We'll try to point some of this out as we go along. So this is Roundup. I don't know what happened to the other half of this plot. Who, who sprayed this? Just kidding. Just, but why, why is there only Roundup symptomology in the first two feet? It's only your second time ever spraying. Something went wrong. Okay, it's fine. I'm just messing with you. So um, Roundup or glyphosate, All right? Systemic. It's actually got um, here. This is probably the best one. Systemic, so you got seven or ten days. It's going to start to turn things yellow. It can happen a lot faster under hot weather. It doesn't burn tissue per se, right? But by the time you get there, you have plant death, and you're looking at it thinking, "I have burnt tissue here." And what you really have is just plant tissue that's dying, right? It's not. It's not burnt per se. So this is one on the edge of the plot, so you can start to look at it and say, "Okay, I don't see any Liberty sort of or Gramoxone sort of." bleaching, burning, or whatever. I'm just seeing that type of thing, and it's obviously something that's really broad spectrum, so I'm looking for glyphosate. And then, you know, do pay attention to your traits if they have a Liberty Link corn versus a Liberty Link versus a Roundup Ready corn, and same thing with the beans. That's obviously an indicator for you, and that's a, that's a dead giveaway, right? Um, I mean, re all three of them can largely an annihilate everything. If they had something like Nutsedge or Morning Glory, uh, you know, those are species that Roundup's just going to be generally slower on, so you may still see symptomology. Morning Glory is a good indicator there for those um, symptoms. Roundup's going to typically annihilate all the grasses. Gramoxone usually does. It's pretty decent. And then Liberty, you're going to start to see the grasses kind of sort out, especially barnyard grass, fall panicum, yellow foxtail. You're going to see the, the, the Liberty. If you look at a plot, think, man, I really annihilated stuff, but I got grass. Right, especially the foxtail and barnyard grass is probably Liberty, right? So, moving on. On a note on this one, um, this would be like more of a, like a thinking as a farmer problem. We only sprayed this six days ago. We probably sprayed it that way and then cleaned out the boom over there. So that end, there was a slow step and then somebody just sat there and like sprayed the boom out so it got a concentrated dose. Oh, so that's why it's not showing symptoms. It was only six days ago. It's oh. only been sprayed six days ago. Okay. So if we were here a week later, which can't be because of the contest, 
Oh, okay. This would be fried, but on the weather over the last week, that's why we're early in the symptomology versus late in it. And then the concentrated dose over there is what caused it. So that's something where if you see like an injury pattern yeah. or something like that, it gives you something to think about. Okay, well. They should. Oh, they'll tell you. Yeah. yeah, but they're going to spray it early enough that you're not going to walk in and see lack of symptoms. I didn't realize that when I was talking about the plot. So basically the symptoms here haven't, like Bruce said, haven't started to show up except, you know, on the edge there. Uh, right. And we were off on all of our, all of our spray days because of the weather. We just didn't know. So based on planning and when we were at the spray, and the contact dose has been getting the same that you could have. So yeah. it might, it'll be another week along where it'll look different, but similar. You can hope there's some there's symptomology somewhere between total annihilation and this, right? That's what you're kind of hoping. Yeah, and if it was completely fried, like it may be at the contest, the good thing is to go right to the edge where you have plants that got like a yeah. Yeah. Spray yeah. Being All right, so 2,4-D and dicamba. This is 2,4-D. Everybody know growth regulator symptoms, 2,4-D dicamba, twisting, whatever. So you really only have two herbicides here. I'll take it back. The ALS inhibitors, like on Morning Glory, we talked about that. They can cause sort of some distorted growth, yellowing, right, that type of thing, right? But, I mean, when you start seeing things flip over, grow all weird, you know it's going to be 2,4-D or dicamba. Um, they actually could throw up, um, you know, there are uh, beans that have resistance to, right, one or the other. So keep pay attention to your beans. They could give you a bean that's resistant to 2,4-D or, or, or uh, dicamba. Um, both safe largely on grasses. You can forget both of them. You can get sort of a little bit of a leaning on the grass sometimes. I can. We concluded which one causes that more often. Yeah, and I think I think I think you see it here too. Um, I'm trying to think of key differences in spectrum. What, what symptomology-wise, they, they can look really similar on beans. Uh, on beans, what you're, I mean, textbook, you'd be looking on the edge uh, or the more lower rates, you'd be looking at uh, more of a cupping, like the edges of the leaves, just soybean leaves, just kind of folding up like that versus a 2,4-D, a little bit more of a elongation, kind of a strapping sometimes, but it's not, it doesn't necessarily come out that way. Um, I'm trying to think of other differences. Do we key, key different? I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they can be really tough to tell apart. Yep. Uh, Buctrel, in terms of things that look alike, Buctrel is a photosynthesis inhibitor. Um, and you can see a little bit of kind of yellowing and, and then uh, tissue burning here. It could be confused with uh, the resource or the flex star possibly. So Buctrel shouldn't have any activity on grass because grasses except you can see under hot conditions it will cause some symptoms on the leaf right um, not not usually growth uh, stopping growth and things like that it's buckterol is very broad spectrum so in comparing those three um, if you can get you can get to symptoms um, yeah I'm not sure you, you may th their symptoms can really kind of run together even though this is a photosynthesis inhibitor um, the buckterol is really across the board good on pretty much all the broadleaves. Can be weak on big pigweed. That's one of its weaknesses. If you get to resource, resource has a pretty specific spectrum, right? Controls lamb's quarters to some extent, morning glory to some extent, and velvet leaf is this big thing and misses a lot of stuff. Um, and then Flexstar um, also isn't just going to be good across the board. So if you come in, see corn basically safe, soybeans out. Well, that'd be your, your other indicator. The buckterol should take out the beans. Right, whereas the resource and the flex star should really leave the beans. So I, I don't think that's a difficult one. All the grass left, corn looks good, wheat looks good, it's safe on wheat. Um, sorghum should be pretty good, and you see it kind of really annihilated the, the soy, the broadleaf with some burning symptoms. Then that's probably buckterol. I, um, so. Which one am I in? 16. So, and then the ALS and everest can be a little bit tough. You got classic soybean herbicide. Um, 
which um, you remember we talked about the pursuit symptoms from the pre-encore and the purpling and the stunning and the yellowing and a little bit of that, right? So you got some of that going on there. Classic may not cause any symptoms on corn. It's, it's capable of not causing any symptoms. Um, no grass activity. Um, it's, early, it's early here for classic like Bruce talked about. So you really should be starting to see um, more symptomology on both the morning glory. The morning glory will kind of shrink down and again be yellow. It won't necessarily die. It just kind of sits there and, and doesn't look that good. Um, if you're looking at differences between classic, sandia, osprey, and accent, um, sandia and accent are safe on corn. Accent's largely a grass herbicide that controls a couple other broad leaves. Um, classics may or may not have grass activity, should be safe on the beans. The other ones I think probably will take the bean, all take the beans out. So if you're seeing ALS symptoms, the beans basically look pretty good. I think your conclusion is probably going to be it's classic. Um, I don't remember if Osprey leaves beans, but I don't think so. So, all right. Um, got some. Yeah, you got some. You got some early symptoms. I mean, essentially, it's doing the same thing Roundup is, but it's inhibiting a different amino acid, right? So um, you got a slow cessation of growth. You got yellowing. You got eventually some tissue turning, right? So that's ALS-type symptoms. I'm not, I'm not sure what else you can confuse it with. You, you could conceivably confuse it with Roundup, but Roundup's going to, among all the among all these, it's going to annihilate everything way more than any of these do. So, okay. Um, and then select, and then two pots away is fusillade. I, you know, I looked at these this morning, and I was trying to remember what the difference is. Select is just generally across the board a little bit more active on all the grass species, right? I mean, that's that's always our take on it, but I I think they're very similar. I'm trying to think of what the differentiator is between those two. You remember? So. I would have to go back and check, but I think if you, if, and of course one of your things you're looking for here is something that doesn't have any activity on broad leaves, right? And then, no, and then, uh, you know, activity on grasses, I don't know if they let you do this, but anytime you pull the top grass leaf out, you know, and you see that rot, rotted meristem, that's select. So I, I'd have to go back maybe and and check our ratings. You could check our ratings in the weed control guide, but I think if you look at the two and you say, okay, I know this is selector fusillade, right? And then you look at it and think, um, you know, this is probably not quite as good on grasses as select. That would, that would be the only thing that I could figure out that the select would be a little bit better. I think it'd be kind of crappy to make you have to differentiate those two. And if they give you just one, you're just taking a guess, right? I think they've done it in a stupid way myself, but nobody cares what I think about this, right? So it's all right. And then here's the other growth regulator, dicamba or clarity, right? Which must be early in its cycle too, because it's not, the 2,4-D evidently worked a little bit faster. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tough to tell. You, you do see the, <clears throat> this is clarity really? It's a little bit out of character for it. You can see the twisting, but it's also got some yellowing, which really isn't characteristic of it. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot. There's not a lot to take home from this one. And the cupping, you can't really see the cupping. It's yeah. It's basically starting to mess up the growth in there and do some things to it. But it's not. Yeah. There's not much to say. There's not much to take home from this plot. So. Okay. This is the clethodim or select, right? No, this is the fuselite. This is kind of what I was talking about. So if you look at the select plot, of course it's only been six days. This is the fuselite. You can see generally the fuselate's just not quite as good, right? And I, I don't know what else to say except that may be your, if you have to differentiate between the two, that's where, what I would go with. But so, okay. Uh, resource and Flexstar, both uh, resources safe on corn and beans. I think it's actually probably safe on wheat. Um, Flexstar's got some activity on 
grasses, depending on the heat and things like that, resource really doesn't. Resource has a pretty narrow spectrum, so velvet leaf is what it's known for. Has some activity on lamb's quarter, has a little bit of activity on uh, morning glory. Not real good on ragweeds. Um, I guess, you know, it did bang up the sorghum there, and you can, you can with both of these get, you know, some of this type of contact or contact herbicides to some of this type of contact activity. The difference is the Flexstar really should beat the corn up more than the resource does, and it doesn't really here a little bit maybe. So the Flexstar, if you're looking at something thinking, okay, I got burning symptoms, I largely have the grass left, you know, then you're going to see is it safe on both corn and beans. You can see the Flexstar beating, I don't know, not really. The Flexstar is similar on the corn. Um, you're looking for some key indicators. Again, you start to see the difference in spectrum where the Flexstar is taking out the uh, canola and the resource really isn't. So if you're seeing those type of symptoms and you're looking at spectrum thinking, you know, once you've eliminated Bucktrill, because Bucktrill is going to annihilate the beans, right? Um, you know, you, you look at the two, resource should not have as broad a spectrum of control as the Flexstar. And then the other key thing is see the difference in the velvet leaf? Again, it depends on weather, but Flexstar is known for velvet leaf, or resource is known for velvet leaf control, and Flexstar will control it, but it's kind of slow and kind of eh, depending on the weather and things like that. <coughs> I can't remember other things about them right now. Uh, and then, any guests? Is anybody looking at their sheet? It's Liberty. And we talked about this again, it's only been six days. So if, if they put it on two weeks before, you're going to look at this plot probably in the Roundup plot and the Gramoxum plot and kind of scratch your head a little bit. But Liberty's going to be weaker on grasses. Uh, where's the Gramoxum plot? It's, let's see, it's probably that one. See that one about four down? That's the Gramoxum. Again, it hasn't completely annihilated the grasses, but. Um, you're seeing burning symptoms on leaves and things like that. It, it affected the corn, you know, regardless of whether it's Roundup Ready, pretty broad spectrum. Compared to this, you're looking at, thinking, okay, I've got some something that's basically got activity on everything, but it's leaving more of the grasses. Uh, Liberty's weak on lamb's quarter and weak on big pigweed, All right? So between Roundup and Gramoxone and Liberty, if you see grass surviving more and lamb's quarter surviving more, it's, it's going to be the Liberty. Um, Symptomology, it, it can actually be sort of all over the board, but if you go to the edge and see more of a white, sort of a whitish cast, not the white down in the whirl, the yellow, but sort of a white kind of turning uh, on the edge, something like that, that's more likely to be the Liberty. Uh, not good on Nuts Edge. Uh, there actually is Liberty Link canola. All right, so keep that in mind when you're going through. And then the three other three ALS inhibitors. So you got Sandia, Permit, which has a broad range of labels. It's actually labeled on a bunch of different vegetable crops and things like that. Osprey, which is a wheat herbicide, right? Which I think is probably pretty brutal on corn and beans, and that's what you see. And then Accent Q, Nicosulfuron, which is a corn herbicide, right? So, um, you know, between these three, you got the classic back there that could have some activity on corn, but should leave the beans. And all of these really should annihilate beans, and you do see that here, right? So you're, so you're seeing ALS symptoms, right? You're seeing kind of the slow in growth. You're seeing the yellow with all these. I mean, you look down these two rows here, you know, you can see they're, they're definitely ALS inhibitors. They've taken out the beans, and then you start to come back to the corn. Sandia is real safe on corn. A nicosulfuron usually is. I don't know what's going on there. Sorghum. Oh, that's sorghum. I'm sorry. So, yeah, right. So the... Um, Accent and the Sandia safe on corn. Obviously, the Osprey's got some safety. Um, and then, yeah, you're looking at the sorghum. Now, Osprey and, and Nicosulfuron are largely grass herbicides, and Sandia is a broadleaf herbicide. So you can see, looking at the sorghum there, that's one of your differentiators. Osprey's got sort of a narrow spectrum of control. Um, Sandia's claim to fame is nuts edge, velvet leaf, pigweeds, lamb's quarter, kind of eh, if I remember right. Uh, I don't see any lamb's quarter out here. So, again, you're looking for the symptomology. You're looking at which crop is it safe on. 
the accent's going to have activity on the wheat. The Asprey is not going to have activity on the wheat, and the Permit or the Sandia is probably not going to have much activity on it either. Um, if they do have nut sedge, again, that's your indicator. The Sandia is known for for its nut sedge control. So, and then the other thing uh, before I forget, so you're looking on ALS. On beans, I'm not seeing the good symptomology here. One of the symptomology symptoms of, uh, um, yeah, you see a little bit of ALS inhibitors on beans and classic can even cause that. But if you're in doubt about symptomology, you see the yellowing and then you flip it over and you see brown or red venation. That's also ALS inhibitors. But I think I think you're going to look at this and go, okay, I think it's I'm pretty sure it's ALS based on symptomology, and then you're just trying to figure out how to tell the the four apart. Um, the classic also has some nuts edge activity and not not as strong as the sandia, but it does have some. So beyond that, some of the minor crops may help you out there. Okay, Gramoxone, which um, among the three, you know, should probably act the fastest depending on the weather. Real broad spectrum, nothing down in the whirl, right? So. Um, it actually, believe it or not, can can be difficult to tell the difference between Gramoxone and and Roundup, but you won't see anything in the whirl. You know, it's basically contact herbicide, and again, that's where going to the edge of the plot can give you some um, better information because the edge of the Roundup plot, you should have weeds that are sort of stunted with kind of a little bit of that uh, yellowing in it. Um, and then again, if you have you know Roundup Ready Liberty Link corn. Uh, things like that. Beans, they're going to survive on um, the Roundup and the Liberty, depending on what's sprayed in the Gramoxone will have activity across the board. And again, you can see Gramoxone look like this and you can come in and see scorched earth, which is, which is when you see the scorched earth, that's when you're looking on the edge of the plot, trying to figure out, okay, do, do I have any systemic activity like glyphosate? Do I have any white like I've got, you know, with Liberty and you actually have a little bit of that here or what's going on? So. Um, I don't know drive. We have this conversation every year. It's a growth regulator, yes? It's got, what is it? I see, I, I don't know. It's got some really cool grass. Look at these symptoms here. Some pretty cool, pretty cool symptoms. All right. So, it's a, it's a turf herbicide for crabgrass control, right? Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, sharpen, sharp, sharpen is a. It has some residual activity, but it's a foliar herbicide. But it can't actually be applied to any crops over the top because it burns them all, right? So it's it's a PPO inhibitor like the Flexstar and the Resource. But um, what you can see is it's largely not safe on anything, right? It doesn't have very much grass activity, um, and you should really see burning on everything else. To finish up really quick, there's your. There's your only post-emergence bleacher, right? Does everybody see the white? Walk into a plot, you see that white? It's Lotus. And then, I don't know Envoke either. What's Envoke? There's a nice section on it in their notes. Okay, I don't know. Good practice, guys. That's quick and dirty. 